Hi, so in the previous videos we have looked at showing that a balanced growth path exists and that, and in the most recent video we looked at the fact that we do actually converge to this balanced growth path. Now in this video I'm going to go over how we show the actual quantities or the values of our key variables and what they'll actually be once we're at balanced growth path. So in order to do this we'll take this equation that we derived in the previous video uh, that this this is the growth rate of our k tilde or our capital per effective worker and what we can note is that in a balanced growth path we have assumed that this is equal to zero this is our definition of a bgp so what I've done in the next line is we can just set this equal to zero. And from this, it's very simple. We can just rearrange to find what the value of our K tilde is going to be in balanced growth path. There is one unique value of this K tilde for which it grows at rate zero or it is constant. And it's given by this. So this is our unique value of capital per effective worker in balanced growth path and we'll notice that this depends on our parameters in our model and nothing else it's just how we find these or what value we find for these constants so we have a constant savings rate s and we can estimate this empirically we can estimate what rate the population grows at what our capital depreciates at and what our sort of growth in tfp or our growth in technology is and this is just all raised to the power of one over the labor share of income in our economy and so this is our first value or our first quantity in balanced growth path what we also might want to look at is our output per effective worker and to find this we can just note this relationship that we found in the previous video or the one before which said that y tilde was just equal to k tilde to the power of alpha. And we can see then from the fact that we have what k tilde is in this equation above, it's very simple to figure out what y tilde is. So we just substitute in our k tilde above and we see that it's just the same thing raised to the power of alpha. So again, it's going to positively depend on savings. If we increase savings, we're going to increase investment which will then increase our balanced growth path level of output per effective worker. And it depends negatively on our sort of depreciation or break even terms down here. And it will depend on our parameters, what, what fraction of national income goes to the capital stock and what fraction goes to the labor stock. And finally, the other value that we'd be particularly interested in is our value of consumption, or C tilde, in balanced growth path. And this is the thing that we perhaps care about the most, because we get utility from consumption. And if we have higher consumption, we're going to have increases in, well, I just said utility, but an increase in welfare, and so on. Because by consuming things, consumers, they get, they benefit. So we know that consumption is just going to be equal to this constant fraction of the output because we have assumed that our output is given by the national income identity, consumption plus investment, and some fraction of that is saved and everything else is multiplied by 1 minus s and everything else is consumed. So we can just substitute in our value for y tilde that we've got in that red box there and just substitute that into this consumption equation to get our level of consumption or C tilde in balanced growth path. And now the interesting thing about this, which is different to our Y tilde and our K tilde, is that we have savings coming in twice. We have a positive savings term here and a negative saving term here. And we talked about this in the previous solo growth model videos and there is a trade-off with increasing savings with how much consumption we're actually going to have in in our long run balanced growth path equilibrium and this is because if we increase our savings and we know that individuals can either consume or they can invest if we increase savings which means we're increasing our investment well we're going to have to reduce our consumption today in order to 
invest more today. So that's where our negative term comes in here, is from having a reduction in consumption because we're, we're simply spending on investment instead of consumption. But we still do have a positive saving term because by increasing investment, this is going to increase the future capital stock of the economy and this is going to increase the output of the economy. And we know that y equals c plus i. So if we increase y, well, we're going to be able to increase our consumption on this side and maybe also increase our investment because we, we just have a, a larger amount of income that we can then split between consumption and investment. So we have positive savings and negative savings in our consumption formula. And as we said in previous videos, what we want at an optimal balanced growth path is we want to maximize our level of consumption because as we say we get utility we get welfare from consumption and clearly there we are going to have just some optimal savings rate that maximizes consumption and we did this before but now we're thinking of doing it in a balanced growth path getting our golden rule uh, balanced growth path consumption and I will be doing that in the next video where we maximize do the maximization problem here and figure out what our optimal savings rate that can be chosen by policymakers is to maximize consumption. But that is a topic for a future video, so that will wrap up this video. Please do like if it was at all useful, do subscribe for lots of future videos, and check out the playlist to see the past and future videos on the Golden Rule Balanced Growth Path.